Okay, um, I've been asked to make a video on showing how I design something and kind of what the processes go. So I got a copy of SolidWorks 2018 and uh, I'm going to use that to draw the item and then I'm going to use a program called Cura to do slicing. So uh, first off, from do it from scratch, we're just drawing a part. We're not doing the assembly. We don't have all everything drawn up, but I'm just going to do a part. And uh, I'm going to go in here and select the front plane. And I'm going to sketch that. And I have this electronic fly swatter that um, basically when I mow the grass, the mosquitoes in some areas of the yard are pretty bad. And I often carry this with me and beat the mosquitoes down in a sense. So uh, it's a pain in the butt just to hold this in my hand the entire time. It's way too big to carry or to put in my pocket or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to make like a little clip on piece here that will like clip onto my uh, pocket or pants lip or something like that. So this will be just kind of a pretty easy little thing. Just right off the bat, I'm going to use my dial calipers here and I'm going to measure um, the OD of this thing. And we are measuring the OD at pretty much 37 millimeters. Actually, I need to do it in standard here. Most of the stuff that I do is, ends up being in millimeters, but uh, Let's see, so 1.45 inches. All right, so here's what we'll do. I'm sketching on the front plane already. I am just going to go ahead and um, do a circle. And my drawing right here, I don't know if you can really see it down here, but it's in the inch pound second system. I'm going to draw a circle and I'm going to say this is. 1.45 inches in size and then I'm going to draw a second circle and the second circle I'm going to say it is um, just a quarter inch thick I don't think we need to be anything too crazy there um, after that I am going to take a line here and I'm going to draw it off to the side like that and I'm going to take a line from this spot here and I'm going to draw it off the side there and then I'm going to do a third line which is just my center mark I'm going to draw it completely perpendicular up to the top and um, dimensionally wise I am going to say this right here angle is 60 degrees I think that will work and this angle here is also 60 degrees and based on that I can do and trim the entities here and here and here and here here and here and now I got like a a C piece that like um, I can extrude so I do an extrusion and I just say, let's do one inch. And now I have a piece that I think that this will pop into. It will hold that in place uh, fairly well. Um, let's just make it one and a quarter inches for, because let's change it to one and a quarter inches. So now we have this piece right here. And what I would like to do is, um, since we know this right here was 1.245, um, I am going to create a reference plane off of that. And if I do the plane, my first plane will be my top plane here because it's perpendicular to the surface I want to make something. 
and then I want to shift the distance there and the distance will be 1.45 uh, I can basically put math in here 1.45 plus 0.25 divided by 2 and that will put my plane there but I want to reverse the direction so I do the offset and that gives me that dimension right there which technically is wrong uh, but in all purposes it will actually work um, as far as how I'm doing this so if I go, let's go ahead and accept that so now this is all right now that I got this plane going I am now going to go in here and I am going to draw a construction center line, which will go from this spot down here, directly perpendicular to this part. Then I'm going to draw a rectangle, just like so. And I'm going to find the center of that rectangle right there and right there, just like those two points. And then I'm going to uh, combine those two. I'm going to do the same thing with this one and this one. And now my rectangle drawn, as you can see, is right there. And then I'm going to basically measure the distance of this and I am going to make it just 0.8 and then I am going to extrude it and now it shows me extruding that way I'm going to reverse it the other way and I'm only going to do probably about a quarter of an inch we'll see what that looks like there and I don't even want to go that far So it's really only an eighth of an inch right there. That will give me that flat, nice flat spot to mount anything else on. All right. So now I'm going to see what plane is perpendicular to that, which is the right plane. You can see if I select right plane right there, you can see the square right here is split down the middle. I'm going to select that and I'm going to do a sketch on that. And then I am going to orient that part uh, like so it's not exactly how I wanted it to go I go okay so now the right plane is slicing in this direction right here so what I'm going to do is, I'm basically going to go to my line tool, and I'm going to draw just a, uh, a clip. And this clip don't have to be anything crazy at all. We just like that, and then uh, I'll go to dimensions here, and uh, we will design. We will define some of these things. So this right here is 0.44 inches. I think we only really need 0.2. Um, the thickness of this right here can be 0.125. Make it somewhat thick in that because that's probably a piece here that means something. This piece right here will make it also 0.125 and then we will make this piece um, this piece 
this piece here. Let's see, quite too much more than that there. Drag this back over here a little bit. All right. We will say this piece to this piece in this direction here should be the same. And we will draw this here to here. We're going to make that point zero five and then from here to here will be this 0.125 again and I guess uh, I have an extra line or something right here so we'll just say this right here to here will be Just like that and that and we'll make them perfect we'll make them hmm. let me just take this guy right here yes delete that line and reconnect that right there right there to there will be Kinds of errors. That is eighty seven seventy three. And that one has registered as 90. So this one here. some definitions but now we got a, a clip that kind of comes back to itself so it should kind of create a little bit there um, as you can see this is right there in the center point and then we are going to go to extrude And you can see that this right here, and we're going to go a mid-plane extrusion. The neighbor kids are. And we're going to make this to... Point 0.8, which matches up with that flat plane right there. And then basically we can click clear. And now we got a basically a clip. So, if I print this, um, this should be just fine. So, in order to do that, I can just go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as an STL file. And we're just going to say uh, Zapper Clip. 
and I'll save it as the STL file, which basically just creates all these triangulars in that um, 308 triangles. That's what we want. And we are going to then leave at, and go into Cura. Now Cura is what they call a slicer. And this thing has basically information and details on my printer. You can see here I have a Crowdy Ender 5 Plus. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I would be probably making this out of PLA. So if I take that information, I open up my file and I go into my zapper clip. You can see here it shows up on the build plate. And at this point in time, this is pretty much the exact angle or dimension the way I would want it to lay. But I can select this and I can rotate it um, however I so choose to. So maybe this would be the best way to print it. Or this way. In reality, this way here. And the reason why is because um, there's no support needed. So this little gap right here, it's printed on the ground if it was on the top. It might actually fill this clip spot here with a, of a, a very loose material. It'll take a little bit more longer. It'll waste a little bit more material, um, but it'll just take longer. So there's some orientation that I need to look at that. I can, this software here will let me scale it up so I can make this thing uh, 200 times bigger. Um, I can do it in just one dimension or I can do it in all dimensions. Um, and, I, and it it's not, usually shows up in center, but I can move this however. And so I could print. I can go in here and say I want to make you know, 10 of these things. And I can you know, print, them, print them in bulk or something like that. Um, so it's not anything too crazy, complicated, or anything like that. Once you've got your model and all your details and everything like that, you... And this over here shows all your parameters. So I won't need support. I probably won't want adhesion on. Um, adhesion will give me some, a little bit more, it'll use some material and kind of print it. Um, I'll try it without adhesion. But basically, adhesion will give me like what they call a skirt. And it will help me adhere this part to the print bed better and stop it from possibly warping or moving around. Um, I don't need anything crazy this amount of infill. I'm only going to print 40%. Um, and these are typically the base bit of information over here. Um, layer, qual layer quantity, I'm just going to do 0.2 uh, with my 0.4 nozzle. Um, I could change it to 0.28 uh, with this nozzle size. But there are a lot of other parameters that are in here. And there's even more than this. There's hundreds and hundreds of parameters as far as how different layers work on what different places and stuff like that and other things you can do. Once I got that, I then clip slice. And now it estimates that this will take an hour and 43 minutes. Um, I can go to this preview window and it will show me what every line is. So the yellow here are top and bottom lines. The red is everything else. This blue is a the, like a little purge line that the drills run there just in case I don't have good material through it just kind of does like a purge to kind of get the material moving and make sure there's no cold material or overheated material so you get everything kind of uniform um, you don't have to do it but I kind of I do it anyway um, I can also look at how this thing does throughout so I can really kind of you can see this pattern that's in here that's the percentage fill and you can see how this kind of builds and stacks and everything like that and you can kind of really see how it works um i think i have it set up for two layers thick is what's solid i can change that to four and it will have this inside but it'll be four layers thick on the outside but there's only two layers it's pretty typical um i can also uh change the line types if I want it to. Um, I, I, I turned off, so you can see, I can turn it off travels because it just draws a bunch of lines. 
you can see all these blue like fuzz pieces here that's where the nozzle tip is actually traveling it might not be printing anything but it'll be just traveling around the research set the home or go up in our level um, I don't think they really offered me up a whole lot of information so I don't really have them on but you can turn off different aspects and different pieces like that there's the shells gone so now you can just see the lattice on the inside sometimes you'll notice some weirdness going on in an extrusion and you might have to just tweak something but I usually don't have to remember so then you just save this file um, I don't have one of my member sticks with me or anything like that and then from there you can uh, we'll pop it into the printer here in a little bit and uh, we'll print it out okay so I am going to print a small little series of S hooks so you guys can see how it prints but it only the S hook will only be a four minute print so I've already gone through the process here and hit manually uh, heated the bed to 220 to 50 degrees so we don't have to worry about things taking time to heat up so I'm going to go to print my nomenclature is N4 which means nozzle 4 material 1 S hook 4 minutes to print is what the name of that means I hit that I hit print and you're going to hear the printer moving it's going to its home switch on the X axis and then there'll be another X a Y axis home and then this is what they call the BL touch it sticks out and this will set the Z position you can see there's a little bit of filament kind of stringing out here I'm going to pull that off real quick you can see this little hair that is oozing out of the nozzle it does a fast home now it's referenced everything's in position it's going to come over here to the corner and it's going to do what they call a purge line this will purge out any old material of the previous color previously we had black in there now we're going with the white and you'll be able to see that purge line once the print head gets out of the way that's it and now it's going to print a ring around that area where the print size and this will not be a very big print but it also will print a what I call a skirt and that skirt is basically to create more adhesion for the S hooks that I am printing because they're so small that they would basically probably pop off while they're being printed just gives it more chance to stick and actually print a lot so this is not a very long print um, you can see here the progress bar what's going on so you can see here the filament sits back here it goes up through a filament detection switch which basically make sure that there is filament present it goes through what they call an extruder which pushes the filament through a tube right here through this comes back out and then goes into what they call the hot end red thing is not hot or anything like that at all it's just lit up I don't know why it does it we're already at 34% complete on this this fan right here um, it makes sure the filament doesn't get melted back into the tubing to cause a jam so it makes controls basically regulates the heat to make sure it stays in the hot end and not actually back feed in to pre uh, prevent jams and these two fans on the side are blowing air onto the print to make sure they stay cool and it cools properly and that gives you some characteristics um, that are kind of more advanced we're at 55% right now. The way this thing kind of works is it prints one layer and then the Z axis lowers down one layer and then it will print the next layer. So 
can get a better angle on this. Kind of hard to focus on the print itself with the massive uh, stuff going on up there. We're at 70%, so we're printing about 220 degrees Celsius. I think that's about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. No, it's higher than that. Uh, so 100 degrees Celsius would be 212 Fahrenheit. So we're, we're probably about 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And this bed temperature, this glass bed, is at 50 degrees Celsius. And that helps the sticking. You can kind of see the shadow on here, Annette. That's from the... I use um, glue sticks in order to get some prints to stick better. For better bed adhesion there's some different materials that um, you kind of want a layer of glue between that and the bed it will stick way too well way too good and so these s hooks which we're at 93 percent out these are basically little hooks that for a metal shelf piece net that dean and i can hang our mask from um, so they don't just like sit on some surface that they just kind of hang so that will then, it's done, and it will go back to its little home corner over here. And then you can see, these are the two little S-hooks. And the print sews up, it's finished. It turns the bed and the temperature off. I just hit finish print, and then I can go about doing it again. Now, here is the piece that you watched me draw. And as you can see here, um, this will slide over the end like so and then I can take that and then for example it will hang right there I know it's hard to see because it's black but it holds the thing and it clips onto this pretty easily and it can hang there Thank you.